We're beginning our studies of Chapter 9 on Membrane Transport. In this lesson we want to look at the transport of ions and how that relates to membrane potential. We find that there is a membrane potential that is a difference in charge across the membrane. This is because we have established a concentration gradient of ions. Remember that membrane is highly hydrophobic and pretty much impermeable to the movement of anything that's charged even though it's as small as a sodium or potassium ion. We'll talk in a later lesson about how we establish this concentration gradient. Let's assume for now we have already established this concentration gradient and we want to see how this contributes to a difference in charge, a membrane potential, across that membrane. Sodium concentration is much higher outside the cell, whereas potassium concentration is much higher inside the cell. We find that if we allow those ions movement, that is if we open a door so that they can move across that membrane in either direction, they will move spontaneously down or with their concentration gradient. Remember, if this is spontaneous, it means there's a negative change in the Gibbs free energy. This is solely due to entropy. In the case of sodium, the concentration is much higher outside the cell, and so if we open the door and allow it to flow either way, it will move spontaneously inside the cell. And that's because that gives it more freedom of movement. There are fewer sodium molecules, it has more freedom of movement, and this will occur spontaneously. In the case of potassium, if we open the door, it will move spontaneously outside the cell. Again, that's with its concentration gradient. Now there are cases where charged particles can leak out of the cell. This is uh, at a minimal level, but it is significant in some biological systems. So if we wanted to develop a mathematical expression to quantify this membrane potential, here's our expression. The delta psi is that difference in potential or charge across that membrane. We find that that is equal to R times T divided by Z times F times the natural log of the concentration of ion inside over the concentration of ion outside the cell. In this case, R is the gas constant, T is the temperature in Kelvin, Z is the net charge per ion, and F is the Faraday constant. That's the charge on one mole of electrons. If we assume that it's a monovalent cation and the temperature is 20 degrees centigrade, then our expression simplifies to what we have here. So now our membrane potential is simply a ratio, a logarithmic ratio, of the concentration of ion inside versus outside. In other words, what drives that membrane potential and makes that difference in voltage across the membrane is simply our concentration gradient that we established. This equation also allows us to determine the concentration of ions inside the cell if we measure the membrane potential and know the concentration outside the cell. In other words, if we determine or measure the value of delta psi, and we know the concentration of ions outside the cell, we can calculate the concentration of the ions inside the cell. Let's take the example of sodium. We know the concentration of sodium is much higher outside the cell, and so in that case then our ratio becomes less than 1, and our membrane potential becomes negative. That is, the sodium gradient contributes to a negative membrane potential. However, in the case of potassium, the concentration is much higher inside the cell, so that contributes in a positive way to membrane potential. Remember, ions spontaneously flow from high to low concentrations. Most animal cells maintain a membrane potential of around minus 70 millivolts. We can't really measure an absolute value on, on voltage. All we can do is measure a difference. In this case, the delta V, or voltage difference, is interior minus exterior. A negative delta psi, that is a negative membrane potential, means that the inside of the cell is more negative than the outside. This is a function of the concentrations and permeabilities of several ions. We're focusing in this case on sodium and potassium, but any ions that are present 
that participate in a concentration gradient will influence this membrane potential. So we'll find that the movement of ions alters this membrane potential. We'll see that in the next lesson. And this re relates to the principles of ion transfers that we're looking at in this chapter. However, it also relates to metabolic processes that we'll consider in later chapters. In the next video lesson, we want to see how the nerve action potential is generated and propagated through the movement of these ions. And we'll see the role that the myelin sheath plays related to that nerve impulse.